Inside Redbird Arena this afternoon, it's a Missouri Valley Conference matchup between in-state rivals as the Illinois State Redbirds play host to the Southern Illinois Saluki. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Valley on ESPN. Kurt Pegler alongside former Redbird assistant coach Bob Morris. Today, we're going to see some of the top first-year players in the conference. In fact, Marcus Damask of Southern Illinois may be having a freshman of the year type season for SIU. That's exactly right, Kurt. All he's doing is leading the Salukis in scoring, rebounding, and assists. And in the process, he's shooting 51% from the floor while doing that. He is one that will definitely be in the conversation when it comes to freshman of the year and as he continues to lead the Salukis. Meanwhile, the Redbirds have DJ Horn coming off a 17-point performance at Bradley on Wednesday night. He's been in the starting lineup for about a month and a half, and he shows no signs of leading it. No, and for good reason. He's had seven games that he's hit the double digits in scoring, and he brings so much more than that. He's able to handle the ball. He, di he can disperse the ball. He is an all-around player. I don't see him coming out of that starting lineup, and he has got a bright future that I think the Redbirds are going to build around. 160th all-time meeting between the Salukis and the Redbirds, and Southern Illinois holds an 82-77 advantage in wins over Illinois State, including a 67-55 win a couple of weeks ago in Carbondale. But the home teams have really held serve in this rivalry. In fact, Southern Illinois has not won here since their head coach, Brian Mullins, was a player back in the 2006-2007 season. So the home teams have have had their way with the visiting teams recently in this Salukis versus Redbirds matchup. We talk about Brian Mullins in his first season, the former Saluki player and a SIU Hall of Famer. Took a couple of his teams to the NCAA tournament in 06 and 07 as the point guard, the former Loyola assistant coach in his first year, now coaching at his alma mater. And Dan Muller, of course, in his eighth season at his alma mater, the former ISU star played back in the 90s. And after a 12-year stint as an assistant coach at Vanderbilt, now in his eighth year with 145 wins at Illinois State. Jeb Hartness, Ed Crenshaw, James Durham working the game as our officials, and we are underway with the Redbirds controlling the opening tip. Take a look at the Southern Illinois starting five. Ronnie Suggs has missed the last couple of games with an ankle injury, but he's in the starting five. Eric McGill, Lance Jones, Marcus Damas, we're going to talk quite a bit about him, likely in the grad transfer from Northwestern, is Barrett Benson. And here's this Illinois State starting five. The Redbirds have just turned the basketball over on their first possession. Dedrick Boyd in the starting lineup for the third consecutive game. Horn, Copeland, J.C. Hillsman, and Keith Fisher. Those last two are transfers from San Jose State. And our starting lineups today brought to you by Country Financial. Take simple steps at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. And the Saluki score on their first possession is Lance Jones, the freshman from Evanston, works his way to the hoop and laid it in. And he scored way too easily, Kurt. He, he, Redbirds have got to do something to plug that hole on defense to quit giving layups. Copeland attacks, flipped it up, couldn't get it to go, and it's cleared by Damask. Freshman up and down this Southern Illinois lineup. And we mentioned the starters that are first-year players, too. It's a new-looking SIU team with a new head coach. And they had a great week with wins over Drake and Northern Iowa at home, but still looking for their first true road win of the season. Anybody that doesn't understand that hasn't watched basketball very often, it, it really, you know, you look at conference and conference, Big Ten, Big 12, and whatever, Southeast Conference, anywhere. Going on the road and winning is just next to impossible. And when you do go on the road and win, you're going to have a good ball club, typically. Think. Let's talk about the keys to the game, Bob, in this matchup between the Redbirds and the Salukis. Well, the Salukis got to keep doing what they've been doing to, get, to have the success they've had at their home court and that's be tough on defense they make your life miserable you're going to go into it you better understand you're in for a rock fight you better bring a big bag of rocks with you because they're going to throw it at you all night long they're tough and they just keep bringing it for 40 minutes can also the Salukis can they ride the high 
They just beat Northern Iowa, who was on top of the league until that loss. Can they ride that high and carry it over into this game? And For Illinois State, they got to secure the ball. They can't turn it over, which we saw a little glimpse of in the first possession. They've got to not give away possessions, and they've also got to play 40 minutes focus, which has been a real problem for the Birds up to this point. Well, Jones with a bucket for the Salukis on one end, and now the Redbirds with an offensive rebound have another chance for their first hoop of the game. This is DJ Horn. The Redbirds need Horn to have a good game. When he scores well, they, they're typically in the game because you know Copeland's going to come out and get his points, and then Horn gives them a supplementary score to go with him, and it's it always is helpful. And if they can find a third, life is good then. Redbirds have missed their first three shots from the field, and the Salukis still making shots again. It's a red-hot start for Lance Jones. He has all of his team's seven points. Timeout, Illinois State. It's 7-0 Salukis. Okay, we talked about if they were, they being the Salukis, capable of riding a high and carrying over from the... Uh, Northern Iowa win. It appears that they've brought it early. You know, they, they are, they've got some, they got some players in their freshman class that are going to be heard from for the next three and a half years in the Missouri Valley. Lance Jones had 20 points in that Northern Iowa win just on Wednesday evening. And he, you know, he had 20 points. He made four three-pointers, played 38 minutes, and had zero turnover. Yeah, very what impressive. What a stat line for a freshman against, at that point in time, the number one team in the league. And he moved into the point guard position after the injury to Aaron Cook. He's never played point guard before in his life, but he's adapting very well in his first year of college basketball. 7-0 start for Southern Illinois. This is Fisher trying to get the Redbirds on the board. He flipped it up, got his rebound, and put it back in. Great job of staying with it. Came across to the other side on a reverse lay-in, which allowed him then to have rebound position. Good job. Fisher coming off a 17.7 rebound game in Peoria on Wednesday night. Jones again. This time he put it on the floor and he had it stripped. It was Fisher who came away with it. And now Copeland fills the lane on the nice feed from Fisher. Fisher did a good job right there. He started that whole process with his help defense, created the turnover, secured the turnover, and got the assist. First points of the game for Copeland, who's Illinois State's leading scorer at 15.3 per game. The mask with the ball right there, just your blue collar, rolly sleeves up, come to work every day kind of player. McGill to beat the shot clock, his shot rimmed off. It's Copeland, flips it down to Fisher to the corner. Redbirds moving it well. It's Dedrick Boyd, top of the key, three. Well, that's, that's a shame that they're not rewarded because they had such good ball movement. And they did it from an inside-out attack, made the extra pass twice, and the ball just wasn't going their way on that attempt. Yeah, they got an open look with the Redbirds cold shooting to start this game, two of eight from the floor. Which... That's kind of been the Redbird problem is, you know, it's obvious that they've been cold shooting, but they just came out the last game and shot the lights out of the first half against Bradley. Benson with an offensive rebound, but he can't get that one to go after the missed shot from McGill. And he went up rather softly with that attempt. He's got to be more aggressive if he wishes to have success in the middle. Hillsman to Fisher, that could be an offensive foul. And that's what they're going to say it is. So it'll be a foul on Fisher. The Salukis will have the basketball when we come back. We're just underway, five and a half minutes in. Southern Illinois seven, Illinois State four. Social media day today here at Redbird Arena. Illinois State wanting you to be involved interactively. Twitter, it's a couple of different handles in there. A couple of hashtags, Valley Hoops and ILST versus SIU, plus we've got at Valley Hoops, at Redford Men's Basketball, and at SIU underscore basketball to be a part of the chatter on Twitter. And you can see people have their phones out, and they're checking scores, and they're getting involved. 
as you might expect here in 2020. Illinois State and Southern Illinois with the Salukis off to a 7-4 lead. SIU scored the first seven points of the game, and now the Redbirds are on a 4-0 run. But this is going to be a defensive struggle because these teams take time on the offensive side. You take a look at the analytics of it, and you see that they're averaging about 20 seconds per possession. I mean, this is like a football game with teams that like to run the football and grind it out, and that's probably the recipe that's going to happen here this afternoon. Well, that's a good analogy is it's going to be a grinder. It, you know, I, I made an uh, illustration of it earlier that I said it's going to be a rock fight, and that's just back exactly what I think it is. It's, these two are noted for using possession and using the clock up. Southern Illinois is 350 out of 353 schools on time possession per possession. They are never in a hurry. They're going to grind you down and make you make a defensive error. And when you do, that's when they strike. Yeah, the and Salukis want this game to be in the 50s for sure. That's, that's exactly their right. style. That's exactly right. The Mask's first shot is contested by Illinois State, but he's going to get the rebound. Those are the things that grinder teams do right there. They get second possessions. And then they get this. And Damask down the lane missed it. Can he get it back? He and Jai are tangled up is going to be a foul on Abdu Jai who's just checked in he and Reeves another Illinois State freshman Antonio Reeves in the game as well another look at the penetration here for Damask there's there's you know he sees the lane he goes and the, there's no help side whatsoever until it's too late yeah, what a solid start to his Southern Illinois career Damask leading the valley among freshmen and scoring rebounding and assists now six on the shot clock. And it's a steal for Illinois State. It's Reeves that comes away with a good defense by the Redbirds again. That was. They had good rotations on, on, on that possession right there. And that's, that's how you beat a Southern Illinois. You rotate as long as they're on defense, and you've got to have multiple people on the same page defensively. Horn to Jai for the finish. And that's how you attack their defensive pressure. You go right at the rim make them commit from the help side and find an open man. Horn right there, that's the maturity that I've seen as a freshman, that he's starting to pick up all the other aspects of being that point guard leader. Jones, floater won't go, and Jai clears it. But it's Horn's pass intended for Hillsman was out of bounds. Miscommunication there. They just didn't see each other eye to eye. And now we're seeing another uh, another substitution. Ricky Torres, a senior, coming in for Illinois State to run the point. And we talked about Southern's grinding aspect to their game, how they're not trying to get in a track meet. And they're going to make you suffer on the offensive end when they're playing defense. Against Drake, Drake scored 49 points. Valpo, 50 points. Illinois State, when they were down in Carbondale, they scored 55 points. They don't give up a lot of points. They're, they're 13th in the nation on scoring defense, allowing 60.5 as an average. That, that's tremendous defense. Well, that's Brian Mullen's calling card. He was that way in as a player, now as a coach. Damask, pump fake, missed the shot. Got numbers, the birds do. Reeves all the way down, flipped it up, and won't go. Tipped up and in, following the play and scoring is Zach Copeland. Good job of Copeland following it, even though it didn't have the ball. Trailed it and got rewarded. Good job for these hustle. Birds have gave up a 7-0 streak to start the game and now have gone in an 8-0 run themselves. And they get a turnover now as Copeland's in the front court after a steal, and he laid it in, and the Redbirds have now rattled off 10 straight points. 10-7, Illinois State. A couple of steals and a couple of hoops for the Redbirds. Transitioning from defense to offense. And Illinois State on a 10-0 run. Reeves and Copeland giving Illinois State the lead. It's been a game of runs here to open up between Illinois State and Southern Illinois. 
SIU started on a 7-0 run, and the Redbirds counter with a 10-0 run, and right now it's Illinois State 10 and Southern Illinois 7. Well, of those 10 points for the Redbirds, Kurt, six of them have come off of Saluki turnovers. When, when your defense is creating turnovers, then you're going to get opportunities to score, and they don't have the opportunity to play defense when those turnovers happen at the top of the key, as several of the uh, Saluki turnovers have. They're, they're easy run ops for lay-ins. Yeah, they've lived to some easy baskets for the Redbirds who've hit three of their last five shots and again have their first lead of this basketball game. Dan Mother's team trying to snap a six game losing streak. It's been one of those stretches where the Redbirds get into a stretch. They're in a ball game and then they'll just kind of peter out a little bit and be on the losing end of a 10-0 stretch by somebody, the, by the opponent. And before you know it, the Redbirds were once in a game and now they're out. That's right. They've, they've got to stop the drought and they've had those happen Frequently, and nobody can understand why. They, on the Redbird squad, that is. And, and you, know, you got to tip your hat to the opponent, but a lot of times you also got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what am I doing that isn't working? This is Brown with a pump fake. He's going to try a three. He can't get it to go, and it's cleared by Abu Jai. Giving good. the Redbird some nice minutes here. Well, that was good defense by Reeves right there. Coming in, keeping a contested shot. Torres trying to call the play, gets a screen from Jai, now he's double teamed. This is Boyd with four on the shot clock, penetrating and a kick. It's Fisher with two on the clock. <laughs> Tipped out of bounds by Ebu Jai. <laughs> and we're gonna see Lance Jones come back into the game. He has all of SIU's points. That's one freshman replacing another as he sends Brown to the bench. That's remarkable at this point in the game with 10.45 remaining in the first half. He is the only one that has scored for Southern Illinois. Well, he's right at his scoring average, seven, seven a game, and he got it in the first <laughs> couple of minutes. Lob down low, good oh, defense. Here. It's Torres that comes on the weak side and comes away with a steal. Well, that, that's knowing the scouting report and, and following it to the letter. Well, Boyd's shot's no good, but it's an offensive rebound from Fisher, and they'll reset the offense. Good job by Fisher. He knew it was in Boyd's hand, and Boyd's a shooter, so he was positioning himself for the rebound. Fisher works on Benson, lost it though. And Too many dribbles. Yeah, it's a steal for the Salukis to come back into the front court now. Benson in traffic, but he's fouled by Jai. I'll tell you what, it may be one of the oldest moves. In, in all of basketball, we'll see right here, but the up and under. Go up, get your defender in the air, and go under, draw the foul. It, it, young players out there, if you're a post player, learn the up and under. And that free throw breaks a seven minute scoring drought for the Salukis. And we'll see Harwin Francois in the game for the first time, three point shooting threat. Junior college transfer in the game. Barrett Benson is a grad transfer from Northwestern, was a part of that Northwestern team that made school history a couple of years ago, made the right. NCAA tournament for the first time in school history, and now finishing his playing career at SIU. Pulls the Salukis within a point after his made free throws. This is Copeland, he's gonna work the baseline. And he gets it to Fisher, but it's going to be an offensive foul. A second time the Redbirds have been guilty of a charge, and a, a nice job again by the Saluki's defense. Well, if Copeland, Copeland, as you'll see on the replay, Copeland makes a nice quick move to go baseline, but then he goes in the air. He gets airborne to make that pass. If he just jump stops and makes that same pass, it's a complete pass and a bucket. Got to stay on the floor when their defense is, is, is switching like that. I tell you what, also occurred on that defensive move right there. You don't see a lot of big guys willing to step up and take a charge. That's right. Good point. 
And eight seconds left on the shot clock on this possession. Each team really stretching that clock on their possessions. A credit to the defensive efforts from both teams. Five on the shot clock. DeMass is going to try a very deep three. Now the Redbirds quickly back up. Boyd, nice stutter step, flipped it up and in. Out of contact, no call, but a completed bucket. Good pass ahead out of transition right there. You can see the birds are trying to get the game in a little quicker pace than the Salukis want to play it at. First points for Boyd. Davis works the baseline. He can't get it to go. It's tipped out. The Redbirds with another stop. Southern's gone eight minutes without a field goal. In traffic, it's Fisher. He was falling down. He had to flip it up, or he'd have been guilty of a travel. Francois is going to try a three. That's finally in to break that field goal drought. Harwin Francois, he's a sophomore from Fort Myers, Florida. Last year, 17th in junior college in three-point shooting in the country. He's a guy that can park himself at the perimeter and be deadly. Well, that's getting contributions off your bench right there, which every, every good team needs it. Every good team has it. Boyd's going to try to answer, but his three is short. Just nicked the front of the rim. In the win over Northern Iowa, Saluki's got 17 points out from their bench. Jones traveled. That time he was out of control. Fifth turnover for the Salukis. We're even at 12. Southern Illinois and Illinois State here at Red Bird Arena. It's the Valley on ESPN. Low scoring affair here at Illinois State with the Redbirds and the Southern Illinois Salukis even at 12. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris, and our Redbird Productions crew with you here on this Missouri Valley Conference Saturday. Let's take a look at the Valley standings heading into this final complete weekend of January. Loyola at 6-1 and one sitting atop the standings. We've got Northern Iowa and Bradley at 5-2. and two. And then a, a log jam there. Drake. Missouri State, Southern Illinois, Indiana State, Valparaiso all kind of chunked there. And the Redbirds trying to get out of that spot right now at uh, number nine, again trying to snap a six game losing streak. Illinois State started the year in the Valley with a big win at home over Northern Iowa, but hasn't tasted a victory since. So Illinois State really needs something. And what a year so far that Brian Mullins is having with his Salukis pick for dead last in the Valley in the preseason poll. And they're certainly playing above that. Well, the one thing that these two teams have in common is that they both got have got the two wins over, or they both have a win over Northern Iowa right. to give them their two losses in conference play. There's Copeland behind a screen from Fisher trying to create, now to the corner. Reeves three, no good. This is Francois who came away with it, and now the Salutis can shoot for the lead, which they haven't had and a while again, they just started out with a 7-0 run, but I have only one field goal in the last 11 attempts. I'm a little surprised that they haven't used Benson down low a bit more often. I mean, he, he's a young man that, when taken advantage of, I think he can score some points against. I mean, he had a double double against seven foot Robinson, Liam Robinson from Drake when they played each other. First made basket of the game for Marcus Damask is a three. Shot it over Keith Fisher, and the Saluki's back in front now by three. And he took that shot strictly because the shot clock was running down. Now Copeland's going to try to answer. Rainbow three is in. He had to shoot that over the extended hand of Lance Jones. That was very well defended. But good offense will beat good defense. There's your move by Benson, just as you called for. You can't let a big man dribble more than twice. If that ball is on the floor by a big man, three dribbles or more, then your, your help side defense is not paying attention. Copeland splits the D, but he lost it on the floor. And now it's the Salukis that come away with it. It's Jones with a steal. He dribbled it off the back of Fisher's foot. That, that's not good spacing. Copeland's got to let Fisher clear out on his roll before he attacks the rim like that. Five on the shot clock now with Jones going one-on-one -on -one with Copeland. 
flipped it out to Damask. He's going to force up a three to beat the shot clock again, and this time it's no good. Seems like they have been put in that situation a lot. Clock shot running down, chuck up a three. Opportunity for a three-point play for Illinois State freshman Antonio Reeves. I think that's something that the coaching staff at ISU would like to see Antonio Reeves do more of as we'll get the chance to watch it again here. Attack the rim. He's got a great touch, as you see here on this release. He's got long arms. He plays, plays long. He's, he's got a knack for the game. He just really does. He, he seems to be in the right place at the right time. So many, so many offensive opportunities. Well, that basket is more than what he had in the Redbirds game at SIU a couple of weeks ago in Carbondale. He was held to one point in 12 minutes by the Saluki, so he's already doubled his scoring output from the first matchup between the two teams. And we're seeing Ray Adowu in the game for the first time for Illinois State. He did not play in Wednesday's loss at Bradley. Benson's working on Adowu now. Flipped it up, can't get it to go. Again, the Redbirds with some solid D. Oh, I tell you what, that was excellent post defense right there by Big Ray. Now he's going to work on Benson. Adobu was double teamed. Copeland works the sideline, but they said he turned it over. That's, that's offensive. It is forcing it. I mean, you, you can see right there. But I'm not certain why that was a turnover. I, I, I mean, he dribbled around behind Benson and then went back and picked the ball up and continued. I'm not certain what the violation was other than it looked funky. <laughs> I guess funky's not allowed. Yeah. The mask works the baseline, hangs and fires and can't get it to go. The Redbirds have really made life miserable for Marcus Damask. He's one of seven from the floor. They've also gotten a lot better on their help side defense. Well, Adobu missed the shot and he tracked the rebound way out by the timeline. We approach the four minute mark left in this first half. Hills, oh, there's a mismatch. Hillsman was working on Trent Brown, and he scored right over him. He's got to have three inches and 50 pounds on him at least. <laughs> Redbirds can exploit that if it continues. I don't know that he was, I know there must have been a switch that allowed that mismatch to happen. First points of the afternoon for Hillsman. Now McGill lost the dribble, and it's a kick out. Gooch is in the game. Again, a contested shot. The birds are doing a good job defensively. They, since the first three, four minutes, they've really made some adjustments. Ricky Torres works his way to the lane and then hits the jumper. And offensively, they've made adjustments. They're attacking the basket rather than settling for the, the so many threes. The Salukis had a scoring drought of better than seven minutes earlier in the half, and now it's a second scoring drought of three minutes. The Redbird D has been excellent, and now a steal for Adobu. Great job of being in the passing lane, but you can only be in the passing lane if you're in the right place at the right time, and he was. Hillsman's going to try a three. Offensive rebound by Adobu. He's going to work on Damask. Can't get it to go. There's some tired bodies out there. These, yeah, there two teams, these two teams are winded. We're already past our media time out here. McGill, his pull up is short. You know, the score being 21-7 with about 220 remaining. I've seen a lot of college basketball games that have been like this. Just in the last couple of weeks, it's just scoring just doesn't seem to be there this season like they had hoped it would be with the changing of the three-point line. We have a timeout on the floor with 2.14 to go in the half. Illinois State leads Southern Illinois 21-17. Illinois State 21, Southern Illinois 17 in this Missouri Valley Conference matchup between in-state rivals. It's funny, if you take a look at the coaching staffs for both teams, you find players that played for the opposite team. That's Tony Wills, 
He's in his first year as a Southern Illinois grad assistant. He was an Illinois State guard, part of the Valley All-Defensive Team in 2016-2017, a team that went 17-1 in the Missouri Valley Conference and won the league, shared the league title with Wichita State. Tony Wills on one bench, now with Southern Illinois. And Marcus Belcher, a former SIU star, who helped take a team to the Sweet 16 in the early part of this century, in the early 2000s, is on Dan Muller's staff at Illinois State. So a Saluki player is on the ISU staff, a Redbird player is on the Saluki staff. Interesting. You, you don't see that that often, that you see crossovers of that nature, but it's, you know, it's fun to see. You like to keep the league within itself. I like it. And, of course, you've got... Brian Mullen's brother, Brendan, who's coaching with uh, Salukis, who a year ago was on Dan Muller's staff yep. at S Illinois State. Yep. And I think that, that move came to it's no surprise to anyone. Keep it in the family, literally. <laughs> well, Redbirds turned it over. Zach Copeland was trying to get the ball down low, so Salukis are going to get the basketball back. Down four as we approach the two-minute mark left in this opening half. I like that idea on that last possession by the Redbirds, but it was the turnover result is not what they want, obviously. There's either got they either got to improve that passing angle or he's got to get better hands. One of the two. And now a steal. Numbers again for the birds. Torres to Boyd. Great pass. Torres sized that steal up, saw it, went, got it, and gave it up to Boyd, who was running the floor with him. Great job. The Redbirds in this first half, I think the story for them has been they've made offense out of their defense and they've turned the tables on the Salukis. That's what they're, that's what they like to do. A couple of steals in this first half for Ricky Torres. Benson lost the ball as he was trying to get an offensive rebound. There was contact, no foul. Redbirds now back in the front court. Torres is going to try a three. A little quick on that shot, I think. This is Suggs. He gives it up in the corner. Out of bounds. It's going to go right back to the Salukis. You know that. You know, talking about getting offense out of your defense. In the last game that Southern beat Northern Iowa, they scored 21 points by creating 16 turnovers from Northern Iowa. You see right here. That's that's how you turn off offense. You get your offense from your defense. Great job by Torres to get, read that pass. Shot clock down to three. McGill shoots on Reeves. Once it's again, be a, yeah, it's going to be a shot clock violation as the air ball. Lukies are struggling to get open shots or attack the rim. They just—they're not getting the flow of their offense the way that you would imagine the Salukis to be able to do. They had a seven minute scoreless drought early in the half and now a five plus minute scoring drought again for the Salukis. The Redbird defense has really caused them some headaches. Corner three from Copeland, no. Well, the other, the other night, again, I keep coming back to the Northern Iowa win for the Salukis. I watched the second half of that game. They were making these outside shots at that point in time. Tonight, they're going back to what they were successful with in that game, and they're not shooting with the same success on the road as they were at home. Final seconds of this half. Jones, deep three is no good, and that's the end of this first half at Redbird Arena. Illinois State with a six-point lead. We'll have our country financial halftime report up next. We'll have our... PNC Student Athlete Achiever of the Game. Stats, standings, highlights, and more. It's up next on our halftime report, which is presented by Country Financial. Six-point Illinois State lead here at the half. You're watching the Valley. Just two games in the Missouri Valley Conference this afternoon. This one here at Redbird Arena, where Illinois State leads Southern Illinois 23-17 as we get set to start the second half. The other game that's in progress right now is in Terre Haute. Where Indiana State has a two-point lead on Bradley with just a couple of minutes left in that game. And then three games set for league action tomorrow. Loyola's at Northern Iowa. That's a huge game in the conference. Missouri State at Drake and Evansville will play at Valparaiso. That's around the Missouri Valley Conference scoreboard for this weekend. And we're ready to start the second half of action here as the Salukis will have the ball to begin the second half of the Redbirds in front by six. 
This is McGill. Lost it out of bounds, but it's off of Illinois State. Quick comment on the scores. You saw that Bradley, Indiana State, Bradley down by two. Not over. Few minutes remaining in the game yet. But low score and on the road. Bradley struggling on the road in Terre Haute. It's just conference. Conferences go that way because there's no secret. Scouting reports are so detailed that there's no secrets at this time of the year of your opponent. And we got an offensive foul against the Salukis. Probably going to be on Benson. He was tied up in the paint. Yeah, he was. He was holding on to Fisher down there, trying to establish some position. And I got to believe, seeing that the, in the paint score was 20 to four in the favor of the Redbirds, that that was a discussion in uh, by Coach Mullins at halftime. Illinois State's first offensive look at this second half. It's Hillsman. He's going to try a three. McGill with Boyd on him. Seven on the shot clock now. Ball is out of bounds. Southern's going to have it, but just three seconds remain on this shot clock. Once again, good rotation to make sure the birds were in passing lanes. Southern does like to take their time on offense. Both of they, these teams do, yes. We've talked about that and how they, they will melt the clock down. Going to be Damask in to beat the shot like he did not yeah. get it off. We saw a couple of those scenarios in the first half and now one here early in the second. Lack of recognition right there by the Salukis. Good recognition by the Redbirds to keep the ball away from the rim. Horn was hounded there by Jones a couple of freshman and then he's gonna oh. knock down a three he got the switch and he had the big fella jump out on him and he knew he could do a step back and did good recognition and got the ability to take advantage of it DJ Horn's first field goal of the game gives Illinois State its largest lead of the game at nine this is almost a critical point for the Salukis and Jones takes it to the rim and scores he answers he understood it and, and did what you got to do. The game, we sometimes make the game more complicated than need to be. <laughs> Fisher threw it a little bit too high, though, for Boyd to come down with it. So it's a turnover, and Southern gets the ball back. You, you, Salukis attack the basket, get a lay-in, two points. Come down, their defense creates a turnover. Shut out on that possession for the Redbirds, and here come the Salukis again. A little mini run to get themselves right back. From what was the largest lead by nine, they could cut it down quickly. McGill's going to try a three. Offensive rebound, Benson, he's fouled. And Copeland went over to help him, but reached in and he's going to be whistled for the foul. You see him get the rebound here. And he's not up and into the shot. There was no reason to go for that steal. Just stand there and get, get big. Go vertical. Now again, Jones, but this time he's going to be whistled for the foul. Coach Mullen from Southern wants an explanation. He doesn't, he doesn't understand that. We'll see on the replay. Right there. A little bit of a shoulder bump and a push off with the forearm. Right now the Saluki bench is being warned, too. Jeb Hartness on the inbounds was telling the guys on the bench, that's enough. As he runs away, the end of the Saluki bench is getting quite a kick out of him. They're having a good laugh over whatever just took place. This is Reeves and a kick out. Now Zach oh, Copeland, a three right in front of good the Redbird find. bench. Great patience by the Redbird offense right there and found the best score wide open. 10-point Redbird lead after the three-point make for Zach Copeland. He has 12. Illinois State has a 29-19 lead here at Redbird Arena.
The 2020 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship returns March the 5th through the 8th at Enterprise Center. Visit GoRedbirds.com to reserve your spot in history. Get your seats and get to St. Louis for Arch Madness 30. Since 1907, the Valley runs deep. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris, our Redbird production crew with you here at Redbird Arena in Normal, Illinois. Missouri Valley Conference hoops on a January Saturday. And Illinois State now with its largest lead of the game after a three-point make from Zach Copeland. It's a 10-point Illinois State advantage. Well, with that make, they've exceeded the number of three-pointers that they knocked down in the first half. The Redbirds were one of 10 for a pretty meek and mild 10% shooting from three-point. Now in the second half and just shy of the three minutes point, they're two of three already in the second half. And Trent Brown has re-entered the game now for the Salukis. The other thing, one of the biggest factors that a lot of times gets overlooked until after the game, Redbirds got eight assists. The Salukis got two on the game. That means ball movement's much better on the Redbird end than on the Saluki end. Saluki's got to find some inside, play a little more inside out. They're not doing anything to attack the basket, whether it be off the pass to a post player or off the dribble. Abdu Jai comes in. The Redbirds have Fisher and Jai in going with a little bit more size. Hillsman goes out. And this is McGill. And the that shot was blocked. That's the reason why Jai's in the game. That is what he does, and he does it well. Good defense that time as the ball's knocked out of bounds by Eric McGill. And the Redbirds have just made life very difficult for the SIU offense. Well, the one time that they do attack the rim, they get rejected by Jai. Copeland to Jai on the paint. Looking for help. No, he's going to flip it up, and he's going to get to the free throw line. He looked at Fisher as Fisher was approaching the paint, but instead he took it himself. Well, it was a good entry pass. That's what I'm impressed with. Good entry pass. He's got the position, and he's got the mismatch that he can go up and over. Freshman from the Senegal. And again, he just... Freshmen need playing experience. <laughs> well, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast we're going to see a lot of freshmen on the floor. Right now, Illinois State has three of them on the floor. And I count three as well for the Saluki. So this is a, this is a young lineup for each team. We're seeing a preview of this. Three years. Jai unable to connect on either one. Here's Jones, one of those freshmen, and there's a whistle, and the foul's going to be against Illinois State. He was guarded by Horn. And that's what I was talking about, an attacking off the dribble. Perimeters for Southern have got to consistently start doing more of that. Again, Jones averages seven points per game. He scored the first seven points of this game. And now already in double figures with 10. He, it's ironic he scored those first seven points in the first three and a half minutes of the contest and then did not score again the rest of the first half. But a couple of points here now, three points in this second half, and he's pulled the Salukis within nine. Reeves to Fisher, but it was poked away and stolen away by the Salukis. Too slow to evolve, and defense reacted accordingly. Damask works on Fisher, and there's a foul, a late whistle, and that's going to go against Illinois State. That's People in the arena are not a fan of that call, but I think it's a correct call. But it did come late, and that's how <laughs> you don't win popularity uh, calls when you're slow with a whistle. <laughs> Marcus Damask will be at the free throw line when we come back. It's Illinois State 29 and Southern Illinois 20 here at Redbird Arena. <laughs> Illinois State leads Southern Illinois here at Redbird Arena 29-20. We have mentioned the 
big amount of freshmen on the floor here this afternoon. We're talking about roster makeovers for both of these teams. 11 newcomers for Southern Illinois. That's the fifth most in the country. Five freshmen, two sophomores, two juniors, two seniors, two grad transfers. Illinois State with 10 newcomers, five of them transfers. Five freshmen, three sophomores, three juniors, and three seniors. So if you saw a game last year when Illinois State played Southern <laughs> Illinois and you see this game, you're going to say those are two different teams. Yep. Roster rollovers. <laughs> Almost it has become more common than not in college basketball. And here's one of those fantastic freshmen for the Salukis, Marcus Damask. He was the Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin last year, leading all Valley freshmen in scoring, rebounding, and assists. And uh, one of only six freshmen in the country who's averaging 13 points, five rebounds, and two and a half assists a game. He's had a really nice start to his career for the Salukis. And I couldn't agree with you more. He truly has, and he's been an exceptional player. Well, he got a steal here. Saluki's playing some D, and now Damask is going to get a jam. So he's scored three in a row now, and suddenly the Salukis, who were down 10, are down now within six. I was just going to say, with all the good things that Damask has done prior to this game, today the Redbirds have held him in check, going one of seven. And then next thing you know, turnover creates a dunk for him, and that might just take the lid off the shooting can for him. This is Gucci, gives it up now. McGill dribbling through traffic with Reeves on him. Redbird's not letting any penetration here. Jones lost it, now it's a steal. It's Abdu Jai who comes away with it. Is he gonna take it all the way down? He's gonna go one-on-one -on -one with Gooch. Redbird's trying to space the floor here. Reeves from the corner, won't get it, tipped up, won't get it. Boy, Jai was way above the rim, just couldn't get it to fall in on the tip. Now it's going to be an open three from the other side of the floor, and the Salukis have found their rhythm. It's Eric McGill knocking down a three, and suddenly it's a one-possession game. It was a 10-point Illinois State lead just a moment ago. Redbirds have had one of those moments that we've talked about in the past where they, they aren't spotting up and finding their, 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 their person they're spotted up, or excuse me, their person they're supposed to spot up with on transition. We'll see this three-pointer here on the replay, and you see everybody from the Redbird, there's nobody within 15 feet of the shooter. They become very good shooters when they're unguarded. It's like playing a horse game at that point. That's the fourth three-point make of the game now for the Salukis, who are on a 7-0 run, and have cut that Redbird lead down to three. We've made comment earlier about how the Redbirds have suffered from you know, having these dry spells and droughts and, and this is one of those moments where Coach Muller just took the time out and said okay boys it, you know it, it's time to suck it up here let's figure it out we, we're at home yeah the Redbirds have been snake bit in the six game losing streak where they've had four or five minute stretches where they get outscored 12 to 2 or 10 to nothing something along those lines and right now they've gone almost three minutes without any points here in the second half. They've got to get back to what was leading them to success in that first half and early in the second half also, where they, they were penetrating and either going all the way to the rim or kicking to an open shooter. And they haven't been doing much of that here in the last three minutes. Copeland's going to try to create his three is in. The Redbirds needed something, and they get it from their senior, Zach Copeland. That's when you throw the playbook out, and Zach says, OK, I'll, I'll get us one. 15 points for the man who averages 15.3 a game for Illinois State. Damas is going to shoot it on Hillsman now. Missed it and cleared by Jai. Boyd works on Brown and it's a kick out. Extra pass to the corner. Hillsman's three is in. Great movement. All created from the original attack on the baseline. Baseline kick out, extra pass point. Hillsman's a 30% three-point shooter, but he was pure on that one. 
Coach Muller showing a lot of emotion on that. He was happy to see that one drop. Damask penetrates and scores. Great body control to finish with his left hand while keeping Jai off of him, who is noted as a shot blocker. Now Torres almost had his pocket. He did have yeah. his pocket pick from behind. came behind and got it. Court awareness. You got to know where the, where the other defenders, not just your defender. You got to know where the others are. Explosive move on the baseline, but good defense. Torres took it right away from Jones. And he tried to slip a pass to Hillsman. He's turned it over on consecutive trips down the floor and then had a backcourt foul, and Dan Muller's not happy with him. And he's not happy with himself. He understands that was a, that was a mistake. And, and the, part, the mistake on that was not trying to get the ball. It was the spacing. Back it out. He was open. Hillsman was wide open, but one defender was able to guard the two players. Spacing is so very important for offensive success. Again, an open three. The Redbirds lost track that time of Trent Brown, fortunate enough that he did not knock that one down. Torres went out on that last possession, and D.J. Horn returned to the game. Hillsman penetrates, and he's fouled. The reach-in fouler is out of travel. Oh, they're going to call it a held ball. ball. Wow. I thought it would either be a travel or a, or a reach-in. <laughs> I think I missed something there, Kurt. <laughs> We're going to see Francois come back in the game now for the Salukis. Francois was a big boost off the bench for the Salukis in the first half. He got five rebounds and hit a big three to, at one point for him. Hillsman works baseline. He's cut off, looking for help. Now it's Boyd. He's going to have to shoot with one on the clock, and it's an air ball. So that Saluki defense again, forcing the Redbirds into a shot at the end of the shot clock, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 11.53 to go here in regulation. Illinois State with a seven-point lead on SIU. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Illinois State 35, Southern Illinois 28 here with 11.53 to go at Redbird Arena. History made a couple of weeks ago in the Missouri Valley Conference. One of Illinois State's top soccer players ever, Kate Del Fava, drafted in fact, the highest draft pick ever by a Missouri Valley Conference women's soccer player, 12th pick overall in the NWSL draft. Again, the highest selection ever in Valley history, Kate Del Fava of Illinois State University, representing her community and her campus very well. Outstanding student athlete. Well, neither head coach is going to be happy in uh, post game as far as ball security goes. ISU now has 13 turnovers at this stage, and Southern Illinois has 12 turnovers, and there's just under 12 minutes remaining in the game. That needs to clean itself up for both squads if they're going to have a chance down the stretch to win the ball game. And there's another turnover. Now, these two teams are getting after it defensively, that's for sure, right? I think the offensive side of the room is, is scratching its head and the defensive side is clapping its hands. Now it's Horn from the corner. Off the top of the backboard off that rebound and Jai tried to tip it back but it goes to the Salukis. Now McGill works on Reeves to the paint and a kick out. Gooch is open for three and wide he's gonna open. make that. Once again, wide open. Somebody's not rotating. There's they're typically what happens is kids get caught watching the ball and the action with the ball, and their man moves, and they, they can't find him there. Gooch is 6 out of 23 on the season, just a 26% three-point shooter. Travel, yeah, another and turnover. another turnover. Turnovers and just kill your momentum. You can't score if you don't have an opportunity at the bucket. And Keith Fisher comes back in the game now for... Illinois State, and we're also seeing Brown re-enter the game for Southern. The mass 
masks. Skip pass goes to Brown, works baseline, he's gonna go right back to the mask. Now it's McGill with eight on the clock. He works on Abdu Jai, takes him to the basket. Now Damas catch and shoot in front of the Saluki bench and he knocks down another three. He's feeling it now. He's talking to his own bench on his way back, bouncing up and down, giving the three point sign. He's feeling good. After a three point first half, he now has got 11 and the Redbirds answer with Antonio Reeves with a three. Antonio Reeves, anything you can do. Freshman, so can I. Now McGill, the offense has come alive now. Southern Illinois had 17 points in the first half. They have 17 points now in this, or 19 points in the first 11 minutes of the second half. Now Reeves. This is Boyd, his pull up jumper. Front of the rim, no good. Here's Gooch. He gives it up to the mask. He's got the hot hand. The mask. He's going to try oh, another three. Oh, he's way out there on that one. That may have been a heat check to see if he's still feeling it, but not that time. We approach the nine-minute mark left in this one, and the Redbirds turned it over. And now the Salukis are trying to. Ball is on the floor. DJ Horn goes and gets it. That could be a foul. Yes, I believe it is. On Francois diving on top of Horn. Oh, that was a crazy sequence. That it was. Indeed, here's, here's another look. It was an errant pass from Horn to Jai. Give Reeves credit for kind of keeping that ball alive. The Salukis tried at the timeline to make something happen, but Gooch couldn't contain it. And it's finally... D.J. Horn, who comes up with it for Illinois State, and the foul is the man who dived on top of him, Harwin Francois. Horn's. D.J. Horn's rubbing his chest out there a little bit ago. It's like, wow. Wasn't expecting football action yeah. today. Well, we saw Brock Spack, the Illinois State head football coach in the building before tip time. He, he'd like to see more of that, maybe. <laughs> this is Copeland now. Penetrates, flipped it up and in. Boy, oh, he just wasn't going to be deni denied on that one. He went down the lane. I like seeing him attack that rim. When he can get the step and turn the corner like that and gain an advantage, get the angle, he's tough to stop. 17 points in 24 minutes today for Zach Copeland. And right now, Benson is down. This is Barrett Benson. And did he twist his ankle? He and Reeves collided as Reeves was chasing his man through the lane you see and we'll see it here on the replay hopefully and I think they just there's Horn hits him and now Reeves goes through and they they hit knees I oh, believe yeah and that oh that can hurt and you see he's got a he's got his knees both bandaged so they must be sore to begin with but he's still in the game and McGill is bumped by Copeland. Well, those, those two guys are going at it. That they are. Before the shot, McGill thought he was going to the free throw line, but before the shot, out of bounds under the Saluki bucket. So that's foul number three on Zach Copeland, the sixth team foul against Illinois State. That's something to keep an eye on. That's good identification by you. You, you make good assistance on those <laughs> kind of things. Brown works it in the paint, flips it oh. up to Francois, who couldn't finish right at the rim. Wow. Francois got to convert those. Reeves with a crossover dribble. He can't get it to go. And the ball comes away, and it's Francois who comes down with it. Now McGill, and we've got a whistle. And if that's on Copeland, that's his fourth. That is, with a lot of time left in this ball game, 7.44. He's got to know better than that. It, he's likely headed to the Redbird bench. Illinois State's lead is down to four with 7.44 to go here at Redbird Arena. 
Illinois State with a 40-36 lead. Zach Copeland just picked up his fourth foul with 7.44 to play. So Illinois State's leading scorer is likely going to be spending some time on the Redbird bench. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for each of these teams. The Salukis have a big, big game at home against Loyola midweek. Salukis are undefeated at home this year before they go back on the road to play at Drake and at Evansville. The Redbirds are finishing up a stretch of three games at home out of four with a game against Evansville on Wednesday before Illinois State goes on the road to play at Valpo and at Missouri State. The Redbirds will be seeing Evansville and Valparaiso for the first time this year. And so it's going to be McGill to the free throw line now for the Salukis. Bonus shot coming, McGill from Memphis, a Southeast Missouri State recruit, and then he played at Panola College in Texas before coming here to uh, Southern Illinois, and the Salukis are within two at this point. Well, we've got a whistle and tangled up. Keith Fisher is on the floor now for Illinois State. Benson is drawing the foul for some form of illegal contact. We'll see it here. Bumping, excessive bumping as he's going down the lane. A lot of contact here this afternoon between these two teams. Defensive coaches love, love to see this. And now a steal, jumping the passing lane and coming away with it is Jones who takes it all the way down and we have a tie game. Just a ill-advised lazy pass right there by Hillsman. I don't understand those kind of turnovers. That I know it drives Coach Muller crazy. Hillsman's going to try to answer with a three, and he knocked it down. And then Dan Muller quickly called timeout. So Hillsman with the turnover, and then Hillsman with the three. And you can see right now that Dan Muller's got a couple of <laughs> words for him. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one way to put it. We'll see. We'll see here on the replay the three-pointer by Hillsman. Reverse the ball. They don't close out with their hands up. And he's got a chance to put her down and does. Two three-point makes here this afternoon for Hillsman. He's got eight points. And again, he's just a 30% three-point shooter coming into the game. But he has knocked down a couple of them. And this is an interesting little factoid. The last four games, J.C. Hillsman had eight points, then five points, then eight points, then five points. <laughs> and right now he's got eight points. <laughs> so if you're playing lottery, <laughs> yep. He's consistent. Yeah. Well, the Salukis, who were down by 10 points, fought their way back to a 40 all tie before that three point make by the Redbirds. J.C. Hillsman, who has Illinois State back in front. And now there's another foul. That's going to be on Reeves. He got tangled up with McGill. Oh, and the, yeah, the Salukis are in the bonus. They're going to be coming to the free throw line now. That's going to be big because. They've struggled to score out of half-court offense, but now you put them at the free throw line, and it becomes a different ball game for them. It's a lot easier to score when there's nobody in your face. And McGill has done this quite well recently, too. 71% free throw shooter. Three of three on the day. Points have been hard to come by. Free throws make it a lot simpler. Are we going to take credit for that miss? I don't think so. Under seven minutes to go here. Hillsman penetrates in traffic, and he's fouled, and he's going to get to the free throw line. Maybe Hillsman a little fired up after his... Uh, Huddle words talk of there with the uh, words with of Coach inspiration. <laughs> we'll see him come down the lane. There's no, the the help is late coming over by at least two steps. Hillsman, the senior transfer from San Jose State, sat out last year with a whole host of Illinois State transfers. He and Fisher coming 
to Illinois State from San Jose State. And now we see Zach Copeland re-enter the game with his fourth foul at the 644 mark. So he was out about a minute. Interesting move, I think, with a three-point lead. A lot of coaches would have seen if they could have got to the under four timeout without him on the court. And let's see if Southern That's runs the any That's ISOs right. on him and just puts puts his man going to the bucket. Brown missed it. McGill again. Now it's going to be Damas for an open three, and he won't get it to go. Another offensive rebound. That's the third of the sequence for the Salukis. Well, this is this is not a shooting display that you're going to teach kids how to convert. McGill finally by he's, going to the bucket. He's played very aggressively here in the second half. Give him double digits now. He's got 10 points. You can't give a team four attempts. Just can't. Now it's Fisher. And the Salukis can shoot for their first lead since they started the game on a 7-0 run. Gill, he's had the hot That's hand. A good he may as shot. well give it to him. He is carrying the load offensively for the Salukis. What a second half for Eric McGill. No points at halftime. And now he's got 13, and the Salukis come up with another stop. Now the Salukis with the lead have the opportunity to run their grind, grind out offense where they're never in a hurry unless you make a defensive error. Jones. From the corner, the shot is missed. McGill this time couldn't knock it down as the shot clock was winding down. Now it's Hillsman, is he gonna drive? He is and he's gonna flip it in. Boy, they just haven't had an answer for him putting the ball on the floor and going to the hole. He's done it numerous times today. And timeout for Southern Illinois. Hillsman now with 11 points. He and Copeland are the Redbird players in double figures. 17 for Copeland, 11 for Hillsman, three Salukis in double digits scoring. McGill with 13, Jones the freshman from Evanston with 12, and Damas the freshman from Wisconsin with 11. Here's the upcoming Missouri Valley Conference schedule on ESPN. Big game tomorrow, 3 central time, Loyola and Northern Iowa. You'll see that on ESPNU. Sunday at 3, it's Missouri State against Drake on ESPN+. Plus. And Sunday at 4 is Evansville and Valparaiso, also on ESPN+, Plus on your family of ESPN platforms. And we'll step aside here. It's 4.18 to go, and we're even at 46. Illinois State and Southern Illinois are tied at 46. That former Redbird player wearing the white hoodie is Keyshawn Evans in the house to root on his alma mater. And now he notices that he might be on the scoreboard. <laughs> Get a nice round of applause for the, uh, the popular former player from Florida. 46-46 here at Redbird Arena. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris, and our Redbird production crew with you for Missouri Valley Conference basketball. 4-18 to play and we're even. Again, Illinois State had a 10 point lead early in this second half, but the Salukis have clawed back and after a very rough first half shooting for Southern, they've been a little bit more efficient here in the second half. Well, they have definitely been able to take advantage of situations offensively when they're getting in one position. We saw four offensive boards or four attempts out of three offensive boards and scored eventually from it. And so they've been opportunistic, and the Redbirds have got to uh, tighten up things a little bit on both ends. They've got to quit turning the ball over on offense and, and get a little tighter on defense and make contested shots for the Salukis. McGill to the corner. Four on the shot clock. 
inside. Benson flipped it up, missed the shot, cleared by Hillsman. He's got to convert. They did such a good job of working the ball, reversing it, hitting it, then kicking it inside, and he's wide open. He's got to convert that. Copeland behind a screen from Fisher. His pull-up jumper is short. Copeland's got to be careful. He tried following his shot right there and almost reached in. He's running out there with four fouls. They need him down the stretch. Now to mass catch and shoot from the corner. He can do it. Ball is in. All day long, he can do it. Hillsman lost him when he ran baseline and time he got over the screen and got to him, it was too late. His third three-point make of the game. He's got 14 now to lead his team in scoring and a three-point advantage for the Salukis. I recall he had three points at halftime. Copeland to Fisher, sweet play and a jam for Keith Fisher. I'd love to see more of that for the Redbirds. That kind of action right there was, was sweet. Great pass by Copeland. Good communications with Fisher to complete it. Brown penetrates, and he's going to flip it up and miss the shot. Redbirds get a stop defensively now. Good job right there, rotating over. Antonio Reeves came over and stopped the Brown on his penetration and contested his shot. Copeland had the ball knocked out of his hands, but he gets it back with 12 on the shot clock. Now it's Fisher. Hillsman he traveled. traveled. Yeah. yeah, that was good defense. As Eric McGill was right in his grill. Just move the ball. Don't let the ball go dead in your hands. Move it. It looked as if Copeland really wanted to try to make something happen from in front of the Illinois State bench, but when he lost the dribble, then things kind of fell apart there for that, that sequence for Illinois State. Under two minutes to go now. The mask from the other hand. corner. Hot he is hand. absolutely feeling it now. Well, yeah. He was one of seven in the first half, and I think those days are done. Now Copeland will try to answer, and he does and with he a three. Does. Big time answer. Big time answer by Zach Copeland. And if you notice, Kurt, on that, he got a wide open look without putting the ball on the floor. Not forcing something. It came out of the flow of what they were trying to do offensively, and he was wide open. Catch, square up, and shoot. Damask has three point make from each corner here in the last couple of minutes, but a big Zach Copeland three gives him 20 points on the game and pulls Illinois State back to a one-point deficit. Here's, again, the sequence. There's a guy that was one for seven in the first half on field goals, and he's just now lighting it up. And then Copeland being Copeland, doing what he does. Zach Copeland, eight of 11 shooting for Illinois State. And as you mentioned, Bob, a six out of 15 effort for Damask after a very, very slow opening half. Ninety-five seconds remaining. It'll be Southern Illinois basketball. And the crowd trying to root on that Redbird defense. So the Saluki send Damask, Lance Jones, Barrett Benson, Trent Brown, and Eric McGill on the floor. It's Horn, Hillsman, Copeland, Fisher, and Reeves for Illinois State. McGill, his backdoor pass is off of the knee of one of the Redbird defenders and out of bounds. The Salukis catch a break. They're going to take a look. There. They're going to take a look at that. He was trying to connect with Damasco, who was working the baseline. And let's see, see here if we yeah. can tell. 
Was it off of Hills? Well, I, I kind of think it was because it looked like it changed its line. It was on the right side of this, the uh, stanchion, and then it ended up hitting it right in the middle as it went past Hillsman. We could have had a little bit different angle, maybe. Now well, let's take another look, see if we see it here. Yeah. 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 It's a much better view. Yeah, that looked like that went off the leg of Hillsman, so it's going to be Saluki basketball with 17 seconds left on the shot clock on this possession and 122 on the game clock. Well, it's an understatement to say every possession is big at this point in time, but uh, you can't turn the ball over, either squad. They've had a problem with that throughout the game today, so they have to minimize those coming down this last minute, 15. Nobody's Benson guarding to McGill, him. pump fake, and he's fouled, and he's going to get to the free throw line. Somehow he was wide open. He made a, oh my goodness, he made a basket cut after throwing the ball to, to Benson, and then no one was covering him. So the foul's on Fisher, that's his fourth, but he saved an easy basket there. He's going to send McGill to the free throw line. There's an old rule in basketball that if you're a shot blocker, you stay in the floor until the shooter leaves the floor. That's when you time it and go up and get it, particularly when you got a five inch height advantage. Three points to Lukey lead. A minute left. Copeland trying to create. This is Reeves. Now Copeland. 10 on the shot clock. Pull up three for the tie. Is in. Holy smoke, that's two big ones. Patience right there by the offense. Nobody panicked. Stayed within the, the rules of the offense and got a good look for the man they wanted to have a good look. Timeout Salukis. For a game that hasn't been overly impressive offensive shooting, this is an exciting ball game. <laughs> You see the shot right there by Copeland coming off the Fisher screen. Really good luck. Some clutch shooting for Zach Copeland. A three that pulled Illinois State within one a moment ago and a three that just tied the game. He's nine of 12 from the floor and five out of six from three-point land. 23 points now for Copeland. Earlier this year, remember, he had a 32-point game. At Drake, that was a, a monumental performance when he had 32.7 assists and did not have a turnover in that game in Des Moines. That, that was rather incredible, no doubt about it. That was, that was a big effort right there, big time. Well, I think you're safe to say that either Damasco or McGill is going to have the basketball in their hands in this possession for the Salukis. Well, 39 seconds left, 22 on the shot clock. They're gonna, I think it's pretty safe to say they're gonna use 20 of those 22 because of their stock. They grind out each possession and they're going to, as you said, try to find one of those two players when it gets to that point. It's, okay, we gotta shoot, then it's either gonna be in the hands of McGill or Damask. And it will be Damask that triggers. Guarded by Hillsman. He tries to create. He did create, and he scored again, this time from the paint. Boy, that was all muscle right there. He just, whoo, there was contact, and he just bumped and went through. Now Copeland is tied up, yep. and there's a foul. He got all tangled up with Trent Brown, yep. and Brown's whistled for the foul. That, that was a good call. That was a good call. We'll see this basket by Damask. He gets gets his head down and just, I'm coming, and he goes right through the chest of Hillsman. He, he is, he's a clutch player. One more free throw coming now for Zach Copeland.
Missed it. And it's tipped out and controlled by the Salukis and a foul in the backcourt. Benson's going to get some free throws as Hillsman fouled him. Barrett Benson is a 66% free throw shooter. Well, I was going to say, that's a good foul right there. Before he had a chance to get rid of it and get it out into the hands of a 75, 80% free throw shooter. He's not had a good day shooting from anywhere today. Other than the fact he's two or two from the line. Only makes that first one. Second one will be coming. It looks like Ronnie Suggs is going to check in now for the Salukis. He'll replace Trent Brown. Benson made it both. Clutch shots right there. Those were huge. That's a make it a three-point game going down the stretch. Horn down, flipped it up, no good. Loose ball tipped out. Redbirds are going to get it back. Copeland has it, but he they dribbled, dribbled on, on the sidelines, and so it's going to go back to the Salukis with 10.6 to play. Well, you try your best to get a quick steal, and if you can't, then you have no choice but to foul. Lance Jones has left the game. He's holding his ankle as he goes to the Saluki bench. And we've got a foul on Illinois State. And it'll be more free throws for Marcus Damask. And right now, Jones is being helped from the Saluki bench to the locker room, or at least to the end of the bench. Meanwhile, Marcus Damask, who's had a monster second half, walks to the free throw line. An excellent foul shooter, 87%. One of seven from the, uh, from the field in the first half, just three points in the opening half for the Saluki's leading score, but a big, big effort here after halftime. Road pressure on a freshman. Makes for interesting moments. And he missed them both, and the Redbirds have an opportunity for a tie score. This is Copeland now in the front court. Why are they not fouling? Why Looking are for they help. not fouling? He throws up a three, and it's no good. And the Southern Illinois Salukis erase a 10-point deficit and get their first road win of the year. 58-55 here at Redbird Arena. The Salukis have won at Redbird Arena for the first time since the 2006-2007 season when head coach Brian Mullins was a player for the Salukis. And Eric McGill is our advocate Broman Medical Center player of the game. McGill with 15 points on 4 of 12 shooting. He was 5 out of 6 from the free throw line. 3 assists and 3 rebounds. And Eric McGill is the advocate Broman Center player of the game. Brought to you by Advocate Broman Medical Center. Together, let's make healthy happen. Visit AdvocateHealth.com to connect to your healthy place. Southern Illinois 58, Illinois State 55. The Salukis erase a 10-point second-half deficit and win on the road for the first time this year. Too many turnovers for the Redbird. It allowed them back in the game. 17 total for the game. That allowed the Salukis to get back in the game. Redbirds, it wasn't due to a lack of effort. It wasn't due to a not trying or anything of that nature. It just, they, they just feel the pressure right now. There's no question about it. And you got to tip your hat to the Salukis. They took advantage of those moments when they saw that the birds became a little tentative and, and they, they just jumped all over it and were attacking the rim and did things that needed to be done to get the win. The Salukis improved to 11 and 10 on the season and 5 and 3 in the conference. Illinois State has lost seven in a row now. Illinois State 6 and 14 on the year, 1 and 7 in the league. So for my broadcast partner Bob Morris, for our producer Lucas Raycroft and the wonderful Redbird production staff, I'm Kurt Pegler saying so long from Normal Illinois. Your final score: Southern Illinois 58, Illinois State 55. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other productions on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN.com. Download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.